Hey everybody, it's Dustin Meyer, and today I just wanted to show you guys a few tips when it comes to using Lightroom 5, and also a piece of software that I really love, which is called uh, Portrait Studio Max. It's um, something that you can download, and um, it's actually really affordable. It also has batch processing and stuff just like Lightroom but it also has this really cool feature it's facial recognition and it's got all sorts of neat stuff when it comes to uh, editing your photos so let's get started currently I'm already in Lightroom 5 and I've picked a image that I feel like would be a great use for uh, demonstrating some of the really cool features for Portrait Studio Max and so here's what we're gonna do um, now this actual image is not a digital file it's shot with film I used a uh, Fuji 400 and lately I've been really having a lot of fun with it uh, some of you may know that I shoot strictly Nikon and this was shot with a 50 millimeter 1.8 and it's actually the newer version which is a lot sharper and has much better color faster focusing and all that good stuff so I also shoot with the D810 and I just absolutely love it. So anyway, let's jump into it. So what I'm going to show you first is right now we are currently in the library module um, and I'm just going to click over to the develop module. So as you can see, hopefully, <laughs> if your screen is calibrated correctly, it's a little magenta. So we'll just start with some basic little adjustments here so sometimes you can use the white balance color picker so we'll try that now it's a little blue but at the same time the way that I like to develop my images especially lately is I like a much softer look kind of like what you see online on a bunch of different wedding websites like Style Me Pretty and uh, others and um, Austin, you know, Brides of Austin, that kind of stuff. So I've been emulating that and I'm really enjoying it, especially when it comes to female senior portraits. But instead of wasting my wasting your time talking about all this stuff, I'm just going to go right into it. So it is a little cool, so I'm just going to grab the little slider over here, which is pretty nice if you didn't know about that. You can just hold your mouse over the number and just drag left and right as you click. So I'm just going to try and find something that I feel is a really kind of natural sort of tone, and I'm going to kind of go with maybe this value right here, just a little bit of warmth, but not too much. Now there is some magenta in the skin. so. I first usually start by adjusting the tint, so let's see how it goes. I'm going to add a little bit of green, but it looks like it's not quite where we want it. Now one of the tricks that I learned a while back that I really love when it comes to correcting for skin tones is you can go over to the HSL tab, it's just underneath the tone curve, and instead of doing something that some people do where they go to the saturation tab and then they just start to pull down on the saturation yeah that could work to get some of the um, the color dis uh, the discoloration on her cheeks but the problem with that that I find is that it also desaturates the lip color so I'm just gonna hit command Z I'm on a Mac by the way and that will just undo that adjustment what I found that actually works a little bit better is I go into the luminance tab and what I do is I grab the red channel which will get those uh, those kind of extra rosy cheeks and I'm just gonna pull it up to make that color just a tad bit lighter so as you can see it looks a bit more natural as far as the skin tone goes we still have a little bit of color in the cheeks a nice kind of healthy rosy colored cheeks the saturation is a little bit down on the lips and yes you could go in there with the adjustment brush but since we're going to go into Portrait Studio Max I'm going to show you something a little bit easier to do uh, in that software so now I'm really liking the overall color and what I'm going to do also is if you notice it's a little noisy because I used 400 ISO film so I just go down to noise reduction, just kind of slide that around until I find something that works for me. Not too much because we don't want to lose detail. And then I go up to the color um, 
noise reduction and that kind of starts help bringing it down. I'm not going to worry too much about the noise because again another feature in the uh, Portrait Studio Max is that it helps smooth the skin out. So we're going to go ahead and just do a quick jump into the the software. I'm not going to worry showing you guys how to use the you know removing the stray hairs because really this is about correcting for the face. So one of the also uh, really cool features about the extra software is you can just right click and go to the edit in option and then go down to Portrait Pro Studio Max. So we're going to do that and it's going to automatically copy that into the software and a lot of times I just use the JPEG with sRGB and 8 bits component at a resolution of 240. Uh, the reason I do that is because it's going to end up as a JPEG anyways and it tends to run the, the software a little bit quicker. Yes, you can use a TIFF. Yes, you can use a PSD. But those tend to create a much larger file. And so I really would like to go ahead and use uh, the JPEG because it just goes a little bit faster. OK, so we're now in Portrait Pro 12. And I just got to tell you, this is some pretty awesome software. So we're going to go ahead and open the image that we originally were working on in Lightroom 5. And let me just double check and make sure. Yep, yeah, that's the one from today. So what you're going to find is that it's automatically going to find the face or faces in your image. It just depends if you've got a single person in the in the shot, or if you even have, you know, a whole family, um, and you can work on each individual person. Um, but in this one here, we just have one person. Thank goodness for the sake of time. <laughs> And let's see here. So all you got to do is work on the outlines of the face and you just drag these little yellow dots here to make sure that everything is all kind of lined up properly. And then usually uh, there's like these little helpful tips, but I've already dismissed them. However, anytime uh, you move one of these, it'll show you, you know, pretty much where everything kind of lines up or where, you know, those dots should go. And sometimes it'll actually detect if the mouth is open or closed, which is extremely handy. But one of the most important things I have found is to make sure that the jawline, everything is lined up perfectly because sometimes you may actually want to uh, slim down the face and it won't work if you don't have it lined up correctly. So, and you can also see that it automatically detects that it's a female, which again is really handy. So, we're going to go into these different options here and the green button basically means that that control or controls for each section is automatically created but I'm just going to go through and quickly demo some of the different things that you can do so you have a master fade but you also have a bunch of different sliders that you can use so if you just want to change the face of the shape of the face you click that and as you can see it automatically uh, slims the face down and I'm just going to hit Command C to go back to normal. Or you can just do the master fade and go up with it or down with it. The one thing that I usually try to do is, depending on the person, you may want to extend the neck a little bit. Uh, sometimes if the eyes are a little too squinted, you can make the eyes just a little bit bigger. And, you know, again, you can change the shape of the face if you need to. A lot of times I'm just really careful on what I do when it comes to the face sculpting controls because you definitely don't want to make them look like someone they're not. Now skin smoothing definitely um, can create you know really nice look or it can make it look really fake so again I try to be really careful about how much I do on here so for example I crank it up all the way and as you can see it looks really plastic so what I also try to do is I will take the imperfections because a lot of times they'll have little rosy spots on their face and I'll go up with that one, you know, it, and you can see as I do that, if you notice the little bit of red blotches on her cheeks and on her nose, if I go up with that, even just a little bit, it helps fade that out. If she also has maybe some red dots or whatnot, the imperfection slider also takes care of that. Thin wrinkles, you really don't have to do that too much. Now, remove shine, definitely want to use that one if they have oily skin or if they're just outside in the bright sun that one definitely comes in in, uh, in handy and then texture really just depends on the texture type you can do the lowest 
type of texture, just really fine texture on the face. Or if you've got something like you really want to add a lot more almost like noise or grain to the face to create the illusion of more pores, you can go all the way up if you want. Um, so what I tend to do is just you know keep it on the first one here. And then spot removal. This is a really handy one too. If they've got uh, a lot of facial acne and stuff, you can go all the way up to high sensitivity if you want, but as you can see, she doesn't have a whole lot here. So we're just gonna put it on one just in case there's something that we can't see. And then also, a lot of times I will mess with the master fade just to make sure that we're not smoothing out some of the more defining facial features like the lines under the eyes, which of course she doesn't have a whole lot, but we still wanna have some of that shadow there. Skin lighting controls I've found can be really tricky and a lot of times I don't actually use it. Uh, for example, you can change the direction of the light and usually I only use this in really drastic situations if you know the lighting is way off and we want to show that facial you know recognition here. So you can actually change the contrast or you can make it as wide as you want. You can add modeling light to it, and this is actually a not so bad way if you really want to create a nice even lighting. However, I tend not to use it, and so because I feel like it actually softens the skin way more than the actual skin smoothing controls, so I usually turn it off. That way, it matches a whole lot better with the original um, original face. Now, eyes, I tend to really enjoy. Uh, I usually only use the first three whiten eyes, clean eyes, whiten area. But for her, we don't really need to use that. Sometimes people like to brighten the iris. Of course, you want to be really careful with that, but if they have a really nice color, mm -hmm. then um, you want to make sure, you know, a lot of times people want to show that off just a little bit, but again, just be really careful. So, and then also mouth and nose controls. This can come in real handy if they have, um, you know, like yellow teeth or something like that. Um, but a lot of, well, for this example here, because the mouth is closed, it's not actually gonna show those options for the teeth, but if her mouth was open, which the facial detection would find that, it will lower the, if they have kind of yellowish teeth, you can adjust for that as well. Hair controls, I really, really like this. Um, so what I tend to do is it'll actually give you all kinds of different colors. So I can go in here and change the color if I need to. But the first thing I do is go to view and edit hair area. And it's got this really handy little uh, module here or a tool where it just goes in and whatever area you click on with the center circle, it will detect that color. And usually it'll only affect the color in the area while you paint over it. And of course you can use the brackets the bracket keys, those are like a little shortcut, and you can go in and change the size of the tool. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but I try to cover as much of that area as possible because the next step that I do, I really, really like it, when, it, especially when it comes to a little bit of frizz in the hair. So once you've you know, added all the, the selection area for the hair, you click OK, and then it'll find that, but now you go down to hair tidying mode, click that, it'll process the hair a little bit, and then what you can do is, and I will click in here so you can actually see what it does, let me zoom out just a little bit. So I will go to smooth hair, but there's also a lower option down here too called smoothing softness. So I click on here, and as you can see, as I increase the smooth hair slider, the hair uh, becomes a whole lot well smoother and it covers all the area that you painted over and then there's also smoothing softness and you can just kind of play around with that if you crank it up too much you start to lose detail but you know I try to keep it as realistic looking as possible but it makes the hair you know look really nice now back to the hair tidying control since this is not her original hair color we're gonna go back and find something that's similar that's pretty close and you can adjust the hair recoloring amount or you can bring it down it just depends on how vibrant you want to make the hair so and now for skin coloring controls this can come in real handy again if the white balance isn't quite right but since we you know got pretty close to it usually um, 
because we you know corrected it a lot in Lightroom, it seems to be pretty spot on. And then you can also do correct outside of face, which it'll correct all the skin area as well. And the really neat thing is you do view edit skin area and it's already detected the arms and everything. So that's really handy. And then it also has some inside picture controls, temperature, tint, exposure, brightness. Smart contrast is actually kind of cool. You can crank it up if you want a really soft look, but it still creates, you know, it keeps those, uh, those shadows and retains the highlights fairly well. You can also do a tone curve, but I tend to find that it blows out the highlights a little bit, so I usually just brighten it a little bit with exposure. And once you're done, I go back and I click on Save, and we'll just uh, crank it up all the way. And again, I use JPEG because it processes it a lot faster. We're going to leave the file name as is just for now. And then what you can do is after it's done saving the image, you just go back into Lightroom or you can go back into Photoshop and you know correct for the stray hairs and whatnot. So other than that, I just wanted to give you guys, hopefully, a quick demo of Portrait Pro Studio Max. It's a really great piece of software. I would give it, you know, four and a half stars, maybe even five stars, because especially if you're batch processing a bunch of images of the same person, you can create a preset of that person and have it applied to all the faces. Again, uh, this is Dustin Meyer, and thanks for watching. If you'd like, please click a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel because we're always going to be putting more instructional videos on here as well.